Hey guys, this is Mr. Millings, and today I want to explain the idea or the concept of heating curves and cooling curves. So we have a graph in this picture here, and it says, uh, what do you think this graph represents? Well, if we take a look at this graph here, we have a substance. Uh, it can be any substance for that matter. And this substance is, is heating up over time. All right, but when we take a look at this graph here, there are certain areas on this graph where the temperature stops to increase or plateaus. All right, what we're looking at here is a heating curve of some sort of substance. And in this instructional video, I just want to explain uh, what heating curves and cooling curves are and use a couple of examples with water to help you guys understand the idea of a heating curve and a cooling curve. So let's take a look at an example. Okay, if we take a look at this graph here, this graph here represents a, a heating curve of water. So let's take a look. Let's suppose I have some ice. Okay, so I have some ice right here. Or some ice cubes. And what we're going to do with this ice is that over time, what we are going to add some sort of a, some constant heat source to this ice. All right, so this ice is going to absorb some constant heat over time. And if we take a look, let's suppose furthermore that this ice starts off at negative 20 degrees Celsius and we put a flame or some sort of heat source underneath this, this ice, what will happen to this ice over time is that its temperature is going to start to increase, 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 until it gets to this point right here. At this point right here, the ice is going to begin to melt. And we know that the melting point of ice on the Celsius scale is zero degrees Celsius. All right, so right here, uh, if we heat this ice up at zero degrees Celsius, this ice is going to begin to melt. So this little section on this graph here or on this heating curve of water will be the melting point of this ice. All right, And then take a look at what happens. If there's a constant heat source, conventional wisdom would have you believe that the temperature of this ice, or in this case uh, of this ice and water mixture here at the melting point, would continue to just gradually increase over time, but that is not what ends up happening. At zero degrees Celsius, once the, uh, the ice begins to melt, there, tend, there happens to be a little plateau on this heating curve, and no more uh, temperature increase occurs. What's happening here, people, is the heat of fusion. And in this little segment on the graph, from here all the way over to here, what's happening is that the ice is melting. All the energy that is being pumped into this ice is not going to an increase in the ice's temperature. Instead, what's happening is that all that energy that you are pumping into this ice is going into the phase change. It's going from converting the ice into water. All right, so what you have between these two points here and here is a mixture of ice and water. All right, so you continue to uh, heat this ice and water mixture up, and bam, right here at this point, what ends up happening is that all the ice has been converted to water, at which point all the energy that you are now putting into this system is going to its temperature increase once again. All right, so you continue to heat it up, heat it up, heat up this water, and then at this point something else will end up happening. All right, what ends up happening at this point right here? Well, this point right here will be the boiling point of water. And on the Celsius scale, we know that's 100 degrees Celsius. So right here, we have the boiling point. Okay, and you'll notice that what ends up happening to the temperature here over time is that it plateaus. The temperature no longer increases, even though we have a steady and constant heat source being put into the system. So why is the temperature not increasing? Well, that is because of something called the heat of fusion. I'm sorry, the heat of vaporization. Okay, what happens here is that the water is going to start boiling at 100 degrees Celsius. And what ends up happening is that all the energy that is going into this water is now not going into the temperature increase. Instead, what's happening is all that energy is going to convert the water into gas. So in this section from right here to right here, we have got a mixture of water 
and water vapor. All right, until this point right here when all that water gets converted into water vapor, at which point we will have nothing but water vapor left over and all that energy that we are pumping into this system now goes into the temperature change of this water vapor. All right, so this is your standard heating curve of water. You've got uh, ice or the solid stage right here. You have a melting point uh, for water that tends to be zero degrees Celsius, at which point you have a combination of uh, ice and water or solid and liquid due to the heat of fusion. Uh, once all that ice uh, is melted, that water uh, will then begin to uh, increase in temperature over time at which point right here at 100 degrees Celsius this water will begin to boil and uh, no more temperature increase due to the heat of vaporization all that energy you're pumping into this system now is going into converting the water into water vapor up until this point here when all the water has been converted into water vapor at which point you've got nothing but water vapor left over and any additional uh, constant heat that you are putting into the system will go into the water vapors uh, temperature increase Okay, so let's take a look at a, a, an example of a cooling curve of water. All right, so in this, uh, in this little graph, we have a cooling curve of water, and this should look the exact opposite as the slide that we just took a look at before this one. All right, what we have here is we have uh, some sort of a, a, a cooling curve of water, all right, where you have a water vapor that is cooling down and eventually turning into ice. But let's take a look at what happens along the way. All right, you have some water vapor at a given temperature. Let's suppose the temperature of this water vapor is at 150 degrees Celsius. And this water vapor is releasing energy. It's releasing energy, so the temperature of this water vapor is cooling down until it hits this point here. Once this water vapor reaches this temperature, the water vapor is going to turn or begin to turn into water. All right, so right here at 100 degrees Celsius, we have the condensation point. We have the condensation point of water. All right, this is the point at which this water vapor is going to turn into water. All right, after that, if we take a look at this cooling curve, there's a plateau here. The temperature does not drop anymore. Between these two areas right here, we have the heat of vaporization taking place. And what ends up happening here is that you will end up having a mixture of vapor plus water as all that water vapor is being condensed into water. All right, once all that water vapor has been condensed into water at this point here, the temperature of this water will begin to drop. So right here, we've got all water and the temperature of this water will continue to decrease as it as the water begins to release more and more energy until it reaches this point right here all right this point right here is where we experience another plateau or uh, another area in which the temperature does not decrease anymore and this right here will be your freezing point your freezing point, which we know uh, for water is zero degrees Celsius, right? All right, so right here, this water is gonna begin to freeze, and you'll notice that there is no temperature decrease occurring any further. That is because all the energy that is being released is being released because the water is turning into ice between these stages right here. This right here is your heat of fusion. So in this section here, you're gonna have a mixture of water and ice until all of this water here gets converted into ice at this point right here at which point the temperature of this ice will decrease all right so uh, i hope you guys understand the idea of a heating curve and a cooling curve and the different states of matter that exists uh, on the different sections of the heating and cooling curve the plateaus on a heating or cooling curve are typically going to be your heat of vaporizations and your heat of fusions okay uh, you need to be able to realize where you have a, uh, a condensation point or a boiling point and where you have a melting point or a freezing point on your heating curve or cooling curve. All right, so let's take a look at one final example here and look at a substance other than water. All right, in this example here, we have a heating curve of ethanol. 
and I just wanted to uh, take a look at this heating curve and then ask you guys a few questions and go over a few questions relating to the, this heating curve of ethanol here. All right, so we have a heating curve. Ethanol is, uh, is starting off in the solid stage down here, and it's a gas way up here. All right, so number one, it says, at what point does ethanol begin to melt? Well, if you take a look at this heating curve right here, the ethanol is going to begin, is going to, begin to melt right here at point B. Okay? At point B, right, as this uh, ethanol that is in the solid stage continues to heat up, it's going to start to melt right here. All right, so at point B, we have ethanol's melting point. And number two, it says, what is ethanol's melting point? Well, that tends to happen at negative 115 degrees Celsius. Okay, so the melting point of ethanol is at negative 115 degrees Celsius. Three, it says, at what point is all the ethanol done melting? All right, so right here is where it begins to melt. And right here is where you're going to have your heat of fusion, right? That's the amount of energy it takes to melt uh, something, in this case, ethanol. Okay, so right here, you're going to end up having a mixture of both ethanol that is in the solid stage and the liquid stage. This is where the uh, solid ethanol is being converted or changed into liquid ethanol. And where does all of that uh, uh, the ethanol get done being melted at that happens right here at point C at point C here on this little heating curve all the ethanol is done being melted all right it's all done being melted and leaving you with a bunch of liquid right here okay so we have a uh, solid right here let me erase this you have solid right here solid ethanol You've got solid and liquid ethanol as solid ethanol is being converted into liquid ethanol. Right here, this is where all the solid ethanol is done melting. And you have a bunch of liquid ethanol right here. So let's look at question four. Between what points is ethanol in the solid and liquid phase? Well, if we take a look, we just talked about that. Between points B and C. So between points B and C on our little heat... Uh, heating curve here is where uh, is where the ethanol exists in the solid and liquid phases. All right, number five. At what point is the ethanol all liquid? Well, right here in point D. All right, in this whole section here, we have all liquid ethanol. And number six, it says, at what point is the ethanol all gas? All right. Well, as we continue to heat this liquid ethanol up it will begin to boil right here and what we will end up having is liquid ethanol being converted into gaseous ethanol all right at what point does all of the liquid ethanol uh, get done turning into gas that happens here at point f so right here is where you have all gaseous gaseous ethanol so in point g and number seven, between which points is ethanol in the liquid and gas phases? Well, between E and F, it looks like. So, in number seven, that is going to be between E and F. And number eight, it says, between what point is the heat of fusion taking place? Remember, people, the heat of fusion is the amount of thermal energy it takes to melt something, right? And that's going to be right here. So, between B and C, we have the heat of fusion taking place. And number nine, uh, between what points is the heat of vaporization taking place? The heat of vaporization, people, is the amount of energy it takes to uh, turn a, a liquid into a gas. And that's going to take place between points E and F on this heating curve. And last but not least, what is ethanol's boiling point? Well, if we take a look, we said that this liquid ethanol is going to begin to boil at point E. And if we take a look right here, the boiling point is 78 degrees Celsius. All right, so I hope you guys are able to understand the idea and concept between heating curves and cooling curves, and I hope you found this helpful.